I am so excited that today is a new day. It's a new year. It's a new season. It's a new month. It's a new hour. It's a new moment. It's a new minute. It's everything is new. And how great is new? I don't know about you, but I remember being a little girl and I would get a new dress and I would spin and twirl and I'd be so excited. And that's how I feel about today. I feel today is new. It is it is a glorious day, isn't it? Is. It's an exciting day. It's marvelous. But I wanted to take a few moments to share my process for beginning a new year. And I believe that it'll bless someone today. It will help you be in the new with yourself. I don't care what circumstances you're facing, what is happening but today is a new day. And if you're breathing, you have purpose. If you are breathing, you have life. All you have to do is keep moving forward. If there's anyone who knows about moving forward, it is I. I, I can raise my hand super high to say, hey, I, I have been down and out. I have not had any food. I have had trouble paying the rent. I have ha I've had some difficulties and some circumstances. But let me tell you something. There's a scripture that says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. And maybe, let me tell you something. Maybe you don't even know who God is, right? But the word says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed. So maybe you are the seed of someone who was righteous, okay? I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed. That is so powerful. Um, and so I remember the times where I didn't know the Lord, but somehow through my grandmother's prayers, my great grandmother's prayers, I was their seed. So I never had to beg for bread. And I'm telling you, I remember being down to my last few dollars and needing groceries for me and my daughter. I was a single parent at the time. And someone from the church came and rang my bell and said, that uh, they were led to bring me a bag of groceries. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. But anyway, I don't even, I just got off on that. Somebody needed to hear that today. But really why I am on today is I want to share my process for beginning a new year. My process begins in uh, September. I begin to uh, recap the year. So I started in September looking at January through August for the year 2020. And just like reviewing uh, my calendar, reviewing pictures, reviewing my notes, my journals, and just kind of seeing what was going on with me month by month. Uh, some of the events that I did, uh, just kind of going through like what was happening. Now we know there was a lot of civil unrest in our country really across the world with the pandemic, um, with the epidemic of the, uh, you know, killing of uh, black men and women uh, by um, police officers. And I really wanna say not all police officers are bad. There are some really great police officers out there. I personally know great ones. Uh, but then just like anything, there are people that abuse their power. And so that was happening in our world, the election and all the drama with our, you know, former president and just so many political officials, um, just all kind of unrest in our country. It was noticed across the world. I mean, there was just so much going on this year last year, 2020, that I really was looking forward to a new year. I was looking forward to a fresh start. I was looking forward to a new beginning. And the amazing thing about 2021, in the Hebrew calendar, this is the year of awe, the year to be awed by God. Our church has proclaimed the year of new beginnings. 
that this is the year you can start again. This is the year that God is going to be in the new with you. This is the year to stand up and be counted. I mean, this is this is the new. It's a new second. It's a new minute. It's a new hour. It's a new day. It's a new week. It's a new month. It's a new year. This is the season where you can proclaim that God, that happened yesterday, but yesterday is behind me and I'm in the new with you. It's a new dawn rising. It's a new uh, evening. It's a new sleep pattern. It's a new eating pattern. It's a new thinking pattern. And so I just began to uh, go through my previous year and I look at every month and um, I start thinking, you know, did my word that I had chosen for myself in 2020, was it aligning with everything that was happening in my life? Now, my word last year was acceleration. And when I tell you everything was accelerated, I mean, it was it was literally mind blowing how accelerating everything was. Now, this year, I as I was reviewing everything, I'm a person that lives, you know, I, I have a schedule. I have a list of goals. I, you know, I have I have list things out every day that I want to accomplish. Um, but this year, I felt like I really was feeling like my word was living intentional. And although I do that, I had never proclaimed it over a year. And so that was my personal, that's my personal word that I'm proclaiming over my life uh, in 2021. In fact, I have a spiritual son that for the last maybe three to four years, uh, he prays for my husband and I, and he'll hear a word for us, and he will uh, have it put on a sweatshirt. And when he presents it to us, uh, I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. It really goes in line with what we're praying for, what we're believing God for. And so I decided this year, you know, every year I choose a word for myself, um, and I, you know, I'll post it um, either on my story or I'll post it on uh, Instagram. And it's just a way for me to, you know, proclaim that out into the atmosphere. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon with what he does and, and have it embroidered on uh, a sweatshirt. And so I did... Um, the word intentional and I wore it on January 1st and it was such a proclamation for me and it was so powerful uh, and I just remember like even recording but the one I have on today and I don't know I'll put it down so you can see it is I squared because there are several I words that I really felt the Lord was speaking to me and um, intentional is the first one but then I do have I words for every single month of the year. Now that's just me. Like that's my process. I'm just I'm just sharing with you my process. And when I tell you the intention in my process really le leads the way to success. Now everything that I put down, it doesn't always happen the way that I think it will. And I think that's important because I remember one day the Lord said to me, I did my vision board. And there was something that happened like very different. And I was like, Lord, but I had this on my vision board, but this happened. And he said, the plans that I have for you don't even compare to what you'll ever put on your vision board. My God, I need to say that again because I need somebody to hear that loud and clear. What I put on my vision board will never compare to what God has for me. Never Okay, so for example, I thought I was going to win this particular um, grant and the grant was valued over $100,000 and it was specifically for the Rise House. I was, I made it to the finals. This was my second time making it to the finals. I knew 
that I won. You couldn't tell me. I was just like, oh yeah, it's, I mean, this is my second time. I got this. Nope. At the start of the pandemic, I got the news that I did not win. I got my consolation prize and it was done. Okay, finito. So I remember being so discouraged. I was like, Lord, that was in the bag. That was literally in the bag. And when I tell you, within a few weeks, everything began to accelerate and things started moving towards the Rise House. And by June, the garden was completed. By September, we had the permits. July, we had our nonprofit status. Everything was moving so quickly. So what I had on my vision board in terms of winning $100,000, the way that God moved, it was exceedingly and abundantly more than I could ever ask you. Uh, dream, think, or imagine. So I want to share that with you because sometimes we do these vision boards and we can get discouraged if something on it doesn't happen. But I'm here to tell you, don't get discouraged. Don't get dismayed because if you have somebody else come in and sit with you and review with you and talk to you about the vision board, I guarantee you the way that you're interpreting something and the way that someone else will interpret it for you will encourage and bless your soul. So I sit down, I review the previous year, I look at my word, I'm very prayerful about what the word is, uh, you know, for the following year. So I got my word, intentional living, and then um, I began to project out uh, what I see every month looking like and what I'm believing for and what I'm hoping for in each month. And so then I have this plan uh, coming into the new year on what I'm going to do, what I'm going to make happen. And, and then this is the part where I think people forget. You can do a vision board but then you have to work at it. <laughs> you have to keep it in front of you. It's one thing to, you know, do a vision board with pictures, but then you want to put some words to it. You want to sit, you want to write out, like, what is that speaking to you? So this year, like I said, I did my uh, vision journal a little different. I'm still working on my vision board. My vision board from 2020 was pretty extensive. It could really go for about three years. There are some things that I'll update, some things that I will uh, take off of it. And um, so I do, I have my vision board um, that I'll be adding to, but my vision journal is a new vision journal and it is very extensive. In fact, I did a vision board uh, for each month. I did for each month. It's in my journal, a whole vision board. And now I'm putting the uh, text with it. And I just wanna share with you just a little bit of my text from January. This is just the start of a fresh new beginning. I see the future unfolding. I see a convergence of years, decades of dreams, goals, and desires. I'm starting right where I am. This present moment is aligning all that I have right now is what I need to progress. If you wanna add value to your life, take care of every moment. Every moment counts. Just because you don't see it, it doesn't mean it isn't there. Disconnecting from the normal can bring you to the extraordinary. Let me say that again. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. Disconnecting from the normal can bring you to the extraordinary. Let go of perfection. Be humble. Rewrite your story. Be brave. Delight in the uniqueness of you. Don't just reach for your goal. Own it own your goals. They're yours. They're no one else's. 
they belong to you. What was ever in your heart, that matters to you and to you only. Take a deep breath. Because really, this is the one moment that you have. Be renewed. Take life to the limits. Don't be limited by what you see. There's a better life. There's a better you. There's a new journey ahead and it's waiting for you to just put one foot forward. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Something went down my throat the wrong way. And guess what? I'm leaving it in here. And I think that's the thing is that it's so important to show imperfections because life isn't perfect. I coughed, but I'm gonna keep going and I won't quit. It's not happening exactly how I want it, but <coughs> I'm going, cough and all. This is not COVID. something went down my throat the wrong way but anyway I write these uh, confessions and I look for a word that is going to um, get me through the year and so as I was praying for uh, my personal scripture for the year I was directed to Psalm 25 and I want to read that to you because it's so powerful in the message version. And I think it's powerful for those people who have really gone through some horrible things in life. I mean, who hasn't? And just a reminder that God is able and he doesn't hold. Psalm 25, my head is high, God held high. I'm looking to you, God. No hangdog skulking for me. I've thrown in my lot with you. You won't embarrass me, will you? Or let my enemies get the best of me? Don't embarrass any of us who went out on a limb for you. It's the traitors who should be humiliated. Show me how you work, God. School me in all your ways. Take me by the hand, lead me down the path of truth. You are my savior, aren't you? Mark the milestones of your mercy and love, God. Rebuild the ancient landmarks. Forget that I sowed wild oats. Mark me with your sign of love. Plan only the best for me. God is fair and just. He corrects the misdirected, sends them in the right direction. He gives the rejects his hand and he leads them step by step. From now on, every road you travel will take you to God. Follow the covenant signs, read the charted directions. Keep up your reputation, God. Forgive my bad life. It's been a very bad life. My question, what are God worshipers like? Your answer, arrows aimed at God's bullseye. They settle down in a promising place. Their kids inherit a prosperous farm. God friendship is for God worshipers. They are the ones he confides in. If I keep my eyes on God, I won't trip over my own feet. Look at me and help me. I'm all alone and in big trouble. My heart and kidneys are fighting each other. Call a truce to this civil war. Take a hard look at my life of hard labor, then lift this ton of sin. Do you see how many people have it in for me? How viciously they hate me? Keep watch over me and keep me out of trouble. Don't let me down when I run to you. Use all your skill to put me together. I wait to see your finished product. God, give your people a break from this run of bad luck. How appropriate 
is that in this season that we have found ourselves in. When we hold our head up high and we look to the hills where our help comes from, there is God. He finds us wherever we are. It doesn't matter the lowest pit that we're in or the highest mountaintop. He is there. He says in Psalm 25, no hang dog skulking for me. I don't have time to be down because the joy of the Lord is my strength. He strengthens me in the time of trouble. He is there for me. He undergirds me. Goodness and mercy are at my side. Though I should be dead, the Lord lifted up a standard for me. His banner over me is love. I have no doubt. My trust, my hope, my faith is in him. He leads me down paths of righteousness. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. It says, I've thrown in my lot with you. You won't embarrass me, will you? I've given you all that I have. I've thrown in everything. I've given you my first fruit. I have, I have given my life to you. I have served you in full abandon. You will not let my enemies get the best of me. I'm telling you, I have been in some situations. In fact, there was a situation that just happened the other day and I just laughed in the face of adversity because the enemy is so stupid. He is under my feet. He sent a question my way for me to uh, ask my heart, why am I doing some things? And all I could do was laugh. And I said, Lord, why do people allow the enemy to come into their lives and use them? Okay, I just, but I just thank God that I knew how to come back and conquer the enemy and let it, the enemy know that he's under my feet. And I love how David says in this Psalm, he says, show me how you work, God, school me in your ways. When we dig deep into the word of God, he schools us in his ways. When I think of Ruth, when I think of Esther, when I think of the scepter being extended to her, when I think of how she stood in the face of adversity, when I think of Rahab, when I think, Lord, of the women that you've sent before me, Priscilla, Lydia, all of them, I say, my God, you have schooled me in your ways. You have taught me through your word that I can be cemented in the word of God. And there I will find truth. I will find the map. I will find a spiritual map of how I need to live, how I need to walk, how I need to not be the iconic Lot's wife, how I don't need to look back. I need to keep moving forward. You school me in all of your ways. You take me by the hand. You lead me down the paths of truth. You are my savior. And then I love how David says, forget that I sold my wild oats. Let me tell you something. I got to get close for this, okay? Sowing wild oats. My God, as a teenager and even as a young woman, he says, listen, but you marked me with your signs of love, a love everlasting, my God. And it says, God is fair and just. He corrects the misguided and misdirected. So you don't even have to worry about your children when they're misguided and misdirected. He will correct them. He gives rejects his hands and he leads them step by step. Keep up your reputation, God. I'm telling you, this psalm right here blessed my whole life. It said, I, I take a hard look at my life and the hard labor. Then lift this ton of sin. God is right there. He's there for the brokenhearted. He's there for the downtrodden. And he will lift you the same way he turned Saul to Paul. He renamed him and he reclaimed him for his own. And so I just want to encourage someone today that God is there. He's there with you.
He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. And I am the seed of Abraham. I am the seed of Zelmira who got saved and then began to pray for her whole family to be saved. I am the seed and he has not forgotten me. So I don't care where you find yourself today. I don't know what's happening with you. I don't know what's happening in your life, but this is a new season. It's a new day and God is in the new with you. And the same way that David wrote this Psalm is the same way that God is gonna give you a new story. He's rewriting your story right now. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but I'm letting you know that there was a season in my life where I just didn't think I would make it. I was in domestic violence. I was a single parent. I was a young widow. I, d I just, I didn't know which way to turn, but God, he delivered me from it all. And here I am, almost 30 years later, remarried, about to be married 25 years. My daughter's been restored. My grandchildren have been restored. My son's been restored. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. I was the seed of someone. I am the seed of Abraham. And my children and my grandchildren are my seed. And I'm telling you, you are the seed of someone. You are the seed of someone. And God will deliver you. He is no respecter of person. The same way he delivered Adam and Eve is the same way he shall and he will deliver you. So be encouraged today. Walk in the ways, the everlasting ways of God, and he shall bring it all to pass. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new second. It's a new minute. It's a new uh, day. It's a new week. It's a new month. It's a new year. And we are in a new decade. It's only the second year of the decade. And this is the decade of declaration. So you will have what you say. So be careful with your words. And I declare over you today that you will have success and you're going out and you're coming in. You will have success when you open your refrigerator. There shall be food. You will have success. You may not have a job right now, but I declare and I decree over your life today that a new job is coming, a new career is coming, a new anointing is coming. A new esteem is coming. A new empowerment is coming. A new education is coming. A new day is dawning. Can't you see it? Can't you feel it? It is there. And everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord for what he is about to do in this new season, this new decade, this new day. So you be blessed. You discover who he is. You walk in the recognition of it. And you don't look back. Keep moving forward and be blessed.